Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. You have heard about others. Your own time has come. Father, we well, thank you and bless your name. The same forever. You change not. God of love, God of mercy, God of compassion, God of power, visit your people everywhere tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let everyone have the desired miracle. Confirm it, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, I want to talk about a special miracle. A significant miracle. And the same miracle that happened to other people coming your way tonight. In Jesus' name. It's in Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to verse 52. I'll read the first verse. I'll read the last verse. Then we dive into the miracle scene and the miracle ocean tonight for everyone. Look at verse 46. Mark chapter 10. And he came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude of people, so also blind but Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. Look at the last verse, verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. And he followed Jesus in the way. I introduce a man to you. He was sitting by the wayside, by the wayside. Nothing doing, nothing achievable and there is no goal and there is nowhere to go just by the wayside at the last verse he rose up at the last verse the blind eyes open and he followed jesus in the way that's the difference you were by the wayside and all you could do is beg for arms and you stay there and there is no way you can go last week you were there today you are there in all probability if something miraculous does not happen you remain by the wayside everybody is moving and you remain at the wayside but when you meet jesus and it touches your life and it touches your heart and it touches your eyes and you are made whole all of a sudden you see there is somewhere better than the wayside there is christ the way the truth and the life and there is a way to go to go and make progress in life and become successful and become significant and now you can follow in the way and that is what god wants to do today he wants to take you away from the wayside and then you move on and on you're going to reach the destination of a great life even from tonight in jesus name amen. and i say for everyone amen, amen. i want to talk to you tonight on the miracle of sight for the blind the miracle of strength for the believer the miracle of soundness for the sick the miracle of total healing total deliverance total recreation for everyone whatever your condition now blind 
begging but to believe that God is able and that his power will do the impossible incredible miraculous in your life I welcome you to this story and as we look at this story the story will be repeated in your life somebody is shouting amen, amen. somebody is saying amen, amen with a believing heart and with an eager heart and with a receiving heart saying amen to what God has decided he will do he will do it for you in Jesus name before I go on in the story I need to help you because you see there are people that are here and they say Lord I'm here you know me you know my problem I dare not tell you that this is what I want God here I am helpless hopeless whatever you want to do I'm here uh -uh. you have to understand how God works don't go to God and just stay there helpless drooping sick suffering anemic no blood no strength no finance everything is down and say lord do what you want look at verse 51 in verse 51 Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto you? You are the one to tell the Lord what I want. Solomon, what do you want? God did not say, Okay, this is what I want to do. He said, What do you want? And he said, this is what I want. Blind Bartimaeus, tell me, what wilt thou? What do you want? And then the blind man said unto him, Lord, this is what I want. This is why I came. This is what I desire. This is what I'm pleading for. And I know you can do this. This is what I want. That I might receive my sight. As you come to the Lord tonight. And you don't leave it in the hand of whatever you want to do. And you say, I want salvation. I want forgiveness. I want my blind eyes to open. I want to rise up and walk. I want a miracle for my spirit, my soul, my mind, my body. I want everything that is run down to come back again. What do you want with your mouth? You will tell him, this is what I want. And the man said, I want to receive sight. I want to see everything. I want to receive sight and insight. I want to receive the mind, the energy, and the vision to see where I'm going and to move on. We're looking at the miracle of sight for the blind. The miracle of sight. The miracle of perception the miracle of revelation the miracle of healing deliverance salvation the miracle of blessing for the blind three things we're looking at number one the persevering prayer of faith standing on the promises we stand on the promises and we persevere in prayer before the Lord and he gives us the miracle that is promised because we are standing on the promises number two prioritized pursuit 
prioritize pursuit with faith in sight for possession. And there are many things we pursue. Our minds are racing. Our minds are running. And people run after this, after this, after this, and after that. But the man we're looking at prioritized the pursuit. He made number one of all my desires. This is number one. Prioritized pursuit with faith in sight for possession. Number three, the prompt performance through faith for salvation with perception. Salvation with perception. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at persevering prayer of faith standing on the promises. I'm looking at Mark chapter 10, reading once again from verse 46. Look at verse 46 there. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out, talking about Christ, he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And a great number of people. Christ was there. He came into Jericho. It was about going out of Jericho. The disciples were there. They were with him. And the multitude, they were there too. There are many people who see that Christ is walking. They see the ministers and the bishops that are seated here with us. They see the multitude that is gathered there. They see nothing more. They do not see a miracle is coming to them. They are there. And they do not understand where Christ is, where the ministers are, where the anointing is flowing, where the multitude have gathered to see something. Blind but Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And he was the only one that called on the Lord. Were it not for this man, there will be no miracle that day. They might follow. There might be a great multitude. But all the great multitude, they are just going a multitude. What do you want? Nothing. Why are you here? We don't know. What is going to happen to you? Well, I'm just a part of the multitude. It's the man that tries this up. It's the man that cries out. It's the man that desires. It's the man that shows his desire that makes that evening meaningful. That makes that gathering meaningful. That makes the procession of that day with Christ meaningful. And you there tonight, it's you that says, I'm here. It's you that say, I want something. It's you full of expectation like this man that makes the meeting, the crusade of this night meaningful. Look at verse 47. Verse 47. It says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he didn't have sight, so he couldn't see, but he had ears to hear. And he made use of his ears. He heard, he heard, he heard. Maybe you are blind, but you can hear. Maybe you are deaf, but you can see. Maybe you are lame, but you can hear and see. 
Maybe you have swelling on your body, but you can feel the anointing here tonight. You make use of what you have to get what you don't have. Look at that verse, verse 47 again. He heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Who are you? A beggar? What kind of beggar? Before today, I used to beg the, the common people. Before today, I used to beg human beings, give me some pennies there. But it's great day of my life. I see the prince of life. I see the creator of the universe. Today, this day of my life, I see the healer. Today, this day of my life, I see the miracle worker. And although it is still begging, but I'm begging a higher personality. I turn away from the common people. I used to beg, give me this, give me this, and give me that. Christ is passing by. Jesus is passing by. By the prince of life is passing by the creator of the heavens and the earth is passing by and I'm begging now I'm begging I'm pleading from the Christ of Calvary I'm begging I'm pleading from the prince of life Jesus that's the name the angel said thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save the people from their sin and I call that same name that came out of the mouth of the angel Jesus and Gabriel said he will rule he will reign and his dominion will be forever and his name is Jesus and I call that same name that rules the universe I call him to come and rule over my life thou son of David I heard in prophecy that that Messiah coming, the Master coming, he'll be called the Son of David. And I plug in and I attach my mind, my heart to the prophecy that cannot fail. And I call him Jesus, thou son of David. And I have heard the psalmist David that I just mentioned now that said his mercy is forever and ever. And I'm still here in the middle of that forever and ever. And I'm asking for that mercy that cannot run dry. And I am saying have mercy on me that's the prayer it is not how loud the prayer is it is not how beautiful the prayer is it may have just a few words less than ten and you call his name Jesus and you say thou son of David and you say have mercy the prophesied mercy have that mercy on me look at verse 48 in verse 48 and many charged him that he should hold his peace and there are many people they have so much respect for the multitude than they have for themselves they have so much listening ear to the multitude that they have for their own need. They have so much respect and honor for the people that will stop them than for the one that will help them. And so if it were other people, I need to be careful here now. These are the people that give me pennies. And if 
these people tell me hold your peace and i don't hold my peace and i keep on shouting jesus thou son of david have mercy on me if they so shout me down that their shout drowns my voice and jesus passes by and i disobey them and i do not regard what they are telling me hold your peace and jesus passes by where do i get my sustenance for tomorrow that's what happens to many people in life it happens to church people it happens to unchurched people it happens to preachers when the multitude shouts you down and say keep quiet don't say that again don't preach that again don't go that direction again and with their authority with their power they shout you down and you keep quiet there'll be no miracle in your life in your ministry in your profession and there'll be no miracle in your calling the secret of having the miracle is that every voice that comes from any direction in any way physical or psychological that you keep on shouting here is the one that can remake your life here is the one that can remold your life here is the one that can place you where you ought to be here is the one that will give you the greatest miracle of life and the man persevered in the prayer of faith standing on the promises of god as we are here tonight you don't want any thought in your mind to shout you down any idea in your brain to shut you down jesus is here he is savior he is redeemer he is healer he is deliverer and you want to respect your own desire and what you want that you want the miracle of mercy and the miracle of grace to happen unto you and you persevere and you keep on telling him lord this is what i want then we're told he cried the more a great deal he cried the more a great deal all the shouts around him that will not make his voice to be heard he raised the level of his voice so that it will speak above the shouts of the people that told him to keep quiet that's what you have to do in life you're pursuing the miracle you're pursuing the gift you're pursuing the healing you're pursuing the salvation and a voice from your heart is telling you don't worry all are sinners don't worry nothing will happen and now you have to be wise and raise your voice above the voice that tells you within not to shout he cried out the more a great deal thou son of david have mercy on me mercy mercy is coming to you today mercy is coming to us today miracle of mercy coming your way healing of mercy coming your way deliverance of mercy coming your way because you stay there and because you say i am going to receive because jesus the son of david will have mercy on you tonight in jesus name now why did this man just stay there why did he keep on shouting saying have mercy on me because he was standing on the promises we sing that song standing on the promises i cannot fail but i see many people 
who sing standing on the promises but the siege in the premises of their problems the premises they have been sitting their comfort zone by the wayside all the time they keep on sitting by that by the premises instead of doing what they see standing on the promises what kind of promises i say chapter 35 and we're reading from verse 4 this is what the man hand his faith on i say 35 verse 4 say to them that of a fearful mind be strong fear not behold your god will come with vengeance even god with a recompense he will come and save you that's why the man continued son of god son of david son of man have mercy on me he will come and save you look at verse 5 in verse 5 then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and he heard that jesus christ the one isaiah prophesied about he will come and save you he will come and be the savior he heard that that time has come that savior has come he will come isaiah said in the future and now in the day of batanios that prophecy had been fulfilled he will come and save you and when he comes the savior the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped that time must come christ has come the miracle worker has come the savior has come and tonight uh, get your place there he will save you it will open your blind eyes it will make you to rise up and walk it will unstop your ears look at verse 6 in verse 6 then shall the lame man leave us and had the savior the healer the mountain mover the miracle worker the deliverer when he comes it says the lame man shall live as an heart and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert look at verse 7 in verse 7 and the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes then in verse 8 it says and an highway shall be there that man but a mere standing sorry sitting by the wayside and he heard why the multitude was the crowd and they said jesus the savior is passing by jesus the healer is passing by jesus that the prophet said will open the eyes of the blind is passing by and when it comes there'll be an highway and already you say i see part of that prophecy being fulfilled that jesus that the miracle worker that the savior and is passing by on this highway and i'm sitting down here begging that's why he cried out and he says it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men do fools like me like you like him shall not err 
therein. That's why he persevered and he kept on saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy came that day. Mercy has come today. I said mercy has come today. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be healed, shall be delivered, and the works of the devil will be destroyed from every life tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at point number two now. Point number two, prioritized pursuit with faith in sight for possession. The man said, what Jesus is, the salvation. And I can see that and I will soon possess that. What Jesus is, there is sight for the blind. I can see him and I see myself possessing the sight what Jesus is is healer I can see the healing there and as I get to him I possess my healing and Jesus is here tonight the same yesterday and today and forever and as we connect with him we connect with our possession our salvation our healing our deliverance and so we read now from verse 49 mark 10 verse 49 and jesus stood still can you imagine the president is going on and somebody by the wayside crying mr president i am here mr president goes on but jesus the president of the whole universe is different that's a lonely man that's a lonely man and there is a deprived man impoverished impoverished man a blind man by the wayside and was going at the captain of his disciples is going at the leader and the governor of the whole universe is going because of the path made for him from all eternity. And one blind, poor beggar is crying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He heard other people shouting him down. He deprived man. A man that has no voice in society, a man that has no contact that will take him to where power was flowing, and Jesus heard. And Jesus stood still. As we are here today, I want you to reset your thinking. I know that the Jesus you are calling upon, merciful, gracious, powerful compassionate he never neglects the voice of an impoverished man a woman a boy or girl he hears you you don't you don't ever think who oh, am i in this multitude and i'm shouting his name savior save me healer heal me deliver deliver me who am i to think that you will hear my voice yes he hears your voice and tonight there'll be a performance of miracle in your life because it says jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called he commanded him to be called understand christ wanted to do something otherwise it doesn't call us for nothing it doesn't call us in vain as we are, as we are having that drawing in your heart and that pull in your soul and the spirit say be of good cheer 
is calling you is because he has decided you are a candidate for miracle tonight and when he calls the sisters of Bukandia and stand up there the calling will result in your conversion and your kill and they call the blind man saying unto him be of good comfort rise he calleth thee he calleth thee i said he calleth thee you know when christ stands still for you all your enemies are going to become your friends all the people that said stop the lord will use them to say be of good cheer right so he calls you as you think about your life the hindrances the voices that shouted you down in the past without jesus in your life those voices will keep on shouting until you stop without the savior in your life all those voices they will prove to you they will want to prove to you that they're the highest power around you and they will want to prove to you that they can stop your onward journey but when you say christ is my savior Christ is my healer. Christ is my sender. Is the one that sent me forth. Wonderful. Because the presence, the power, the prominence of Christ in your life will bring that desired miracle. Tonight, you are a candidate for miracle. And so they said, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Look at verse 40, verse 50. And he, the man, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. When I meet wise men, I doff my heart for them. When I meet intelligent people who act intelligently, I respect them. This man, you need to respect a man like this. He had a garment. In Israel at that time, just like every country today, there's a kind of uh, clothes you wear overall that you wear that shows who you are if you're a security person there's a kind of jacket you put on that when the cars are coming and it shine light on the person there the reflection will show that's a security man there anywhere you go you see a doctor in practice there's a garment you see on top of his garment that shows that's from the medical personnel when you see a soldier there is a kind of garment that marks him out that is a soldier in israel blind people had garments they put on the badge of their blindness the mark of their blindness so that when people are passing by they will not mistakenly push them down because he has the mark and the garment of the blind but now the man when they said behold be of good cheer is calling you christ calling me savior calling me miracle worker calling me okay that means my blindness is gone that means i don't need the badge and the mark 
of blindness anymore. And because of that, he took the garment that showed him to everybody, look at a blind man, and he cast that away. He believed, he had hope against hope. And believing, fully persuaded in his heart that he was going to receive his sight, he cast that away. Jesus did not take the garment from him. He throw the garment away when uh, you have been on crutches and now we're going to pray and we say by the word of the lord at the final amen that you're going to rise and walk now the preacher is not going to come and take your crutches from you you are the one that will say i know I am going to be healed now and I cast the coaches aside. You're being on a wheelchair and you're sitting there on the wheelchair. That is your badge. And that is what you go with every time without that walker, without that wheelchair. You cannot move, but now you know Christ. The miracle worker at the final amen is going to deliver me. You are the one to get up and push that wheelchair aside. You have been using hearing aid. Without the hearing aid, you hear nothing. But you have heard through the use of your hearing aid that Christ is here the healer is here the deliverer is here and at the final amen everything done you are the one that will pluck out the earring aid because be of good cheer behold it calleth you you'll be wearing braces and the braces were to keep your uh, to your feet or maybe your waist or you're wearing the collar that makes your neck stable otherwise there'll be pain otherwise you will get into that kind of condition you'll be crying for help but now you hear that christ is calling you the healer is calling you the deliverer is calling you you are the one the preacher will not come and take uh, the neck uh, brace or the waist uh, brace or the leg brace from you you are the one that will know christ the healer is going to deal with my problem now and then you take that away and he casting away his garment rose and came to jesus and everyone that comes tonight will receive miracle miracle of salvation will receive miracle miracle of healing miracle of deliverance miracle of mountains moved away from you you will have the miracle tonight in jesus name he prioritized his pursuit with faith faith in sight for the possession we're coming to number three Point number three now, prompt performance through faith for salvation with perception. Look at the end of the story. Mark chapter 10 verse 51. And Jesus answered and said, What wilt thou? that I should do unto thee what wilt thou didn't Jesus know of course he knew he told Nathaniel when you were under that tree I saw you before Philip called you I saw you yes he sees you he knows your need he knows the miracle you want and yet he must give you the privilege of asking 
what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And when he asks you the question, you have to be thoughtful in your answer. What do you need? You need salvation. Tell him. Forgiveness. Tell him. The guilt and the condemnation of your life, you want that removed. Tell him. And you want the peace of mind that comes from the peace, the prince of peace. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And when your mind is on him, the savior, the prince of peace, he'll take the confusion he'll take the torment in your heart he'll take that away he'll give you the peace that comes with salvation being justified by faith we have peace with god what do you want salvation peace of mind give unto me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation you are the one to tell him what do you want that my eyes will be open that you give me brand new eyes that i will see what do you want there's nothing you tell him he cannot do because he has all power on earth and in heaven and he is the one asking you that I will be healed that all these torments of demons all these torments of evil spirit will be taken away from my life what do you want what wilt thou that i should do unto thee now since he is asking us it will be unwise that's another way of saying it will be foolish of me to say do what you want why were you crying out do what you want to do why were you racing and running after me do what you want that will be unwise but for you to answer and for you to know you want heaven you want a place in heaven after you live here in my father's house and many mansions if if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and when i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself do you want to get to heaven and escape hell yes i do tell him tell him Tell him he is the only one that can change your destiny and take you away from the paths of hell and get you on the way to heaven. But you must tell him. What burden do you have in your heart? What miracle are you asking for? What do you say today? I must have this and it's only christ the savior that can do that in my life tell him what wilt thou that i should do unto thee and the blind man said lord have you noticed all these people that came and they wanted miracle from christ they called him jesus they called him son of david but at last they called him lord they bent the knee they submitted themselves they surrendered their lives to the lord lord that i might receive my sight understand the language lord not that that you might give me my sight he will give that already he's a giver we are the receiver and as many as received him to them he gave power to be called the sons of god even the people that believed on his name not that you will give me already that's why he came give me salvation that's why he came 
give me healing that's why he came but as you give that i might receive my sight look at verse 52 in verse 52 and jesus said unto him go thy way thy faith has made thee whole thy faith has made thee whole okay why did that man rise up because he was sitting by the wayside the faith made him to rise up why did that man shout jesus the son of david have mercy on me why they shout his faith it was faith shouting it was faith getting his attention what did he raise his voice when he said shut up don't talk again don't ask again what did he cry the more a great deal faith because he knew if he can hear me tonight i've got what i came for and when they said be of good cheer rise up he called me why did he rise up and then he came to jesus why didn't he say i've been shouting so much and crying aloud so much i'm tired now i don't even want it now there are people they're all excited at the beginning and they shout and shout and shout and then now okay the time of miracle has come they're tired they must go to the toilet and they must go somewhere else why did the man continue his journey until he came to Christ faith what did he cast out his garment the badge and the mark of blindness faith and now when the Lord said you come to the final page of the final chapter tell me what do you want that I might receive my sight go thy way thy faith has made thee whole and immediately he received his sight tonight you receive the miracle you receive the salvation you receive the healing you receive the deliverance in jesus name he got his sight he didn't say bye bye jesus Thank you very much. I don't have anything to do with you anymore. I've got what I want. No. He didn't go to a dancing hall. I need to celebrate my sight. I never saw anything before. But now I've got my sight. And he goes to the pop house to dance to the tune of the world to celebrate his miracle. No. He didn't go to idol worshiper in a shrine to show that god is everywhere god is in church god is on the street god is in the shrine and i choose the shrine to go and give praise to god no he followed jesus in the way if for one event I can get miracle sight from Jesus, the Savior, the healer. If I follow him every day of my life, guess what I could have? The miracle of each day, guess what I would have? The life lifting power of Christ all the days of my life. And he followed Jesus in the way. That's why after you have come to the Lord, we say, come back. We have a special meeting at the afternoon lunch hour. You are going to have lunch with Christ. We we'll serve you. We we'll give you materials. And then we we'll say now that you have got the salvation you will follow jesus in the way and then your life day by day week after week and month after month your life will keep on shining for the glory of god in jesus name 
and the Lusaka Alpha location of the GCK in September. Shout! Christ is here for you. Your Savior is here for you. Your Deliverer, Healer is here for you. And He will touch your life, touch your heart. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Say, that's me. Say, that's me. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is calling you. The Savior is calling you. It's bowed, eyes closed. You are coming to Christ now. You want a salvation. You want his uh, deliverance. You want his forgiveness and freedom. And you want him to write your name in the book of life. You are casting away your old garment of sinfulness. And you come now as he has invited you. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. Salvation has come. Raise up your hand. Forgiveness has come. Raise up your hand. Guilt, condemnation will be taken away. You're standing on the promise of God that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Standing on the promises. Raise up that hand. And then, now please stand up. You stand up, stand up for Jesus, for the Savior, for the one who forgives, for the one who takes your condemnation and guilt away. You stand up for the one who brings eternal life unto you. Stand on your feet. And as you are standing with your hands raised up, to heaven you are telling the Lord that I might be saved that I might be forgiven that I might be set free tell him that my name may be written in the book of life in heaven tell him believe because he never rejects anyone who comes. Thank you. He gives, you receive. I receive forgiveness, pardon, salvation now. We're going to pray together now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone now. They desire, they ask, they believe for your forgiveness, for your freedom, for your salvation. Grant them that salvation now in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness with their heart that the merciful Lord, the gracious Lord, the compassionate Lord, as now in compassion and mercy and grace has forgiven them now. Register that forgiveness, that freedom, that salvation in every heart now in Jesus name thank you Lord everyone who has called on the name of the Lord here there online on the radio on television everyone that has called on the name of the Lord according to your failing promise they have been forgiven they have been set free they have been saved now thank you lord everybody say thank you lord in jesus name we pray 
God bless you. That's how salvation comes. God bless you. That's how forgiveness comes. God bless you. That's how you become a son, a daughter, a child of God. Keep on standing and we'll call on our overseer to help us at this time of counsel. I'll come back and then your miracle healing will come to you today. Another amen. Congratulations. You've just taken the greatest step you can ever take. And you have received the greatest blessing you can ever get. Please, our counselors, let's swing into action. Don't leave out anyone. We appeal to our converts, those who have just given their lives to Christ. Let's remain standing as we are swiftly attended to. Let's fill the sleeping block letters. Remember to fill in all the details. Wherever you are, this is a very critical and crucial moment. Please ensure that you submit all the needed details. This also is the first test of the genuineness of your conversion. The truth and nothing but the truth. All the information you'll be supplying, all the details. This is necessary so as to help you. The conversion of your soul is just the miracle of a moment. But your discipleship is the task of a lifetime. That's why you need all the help and support you can get now. And this sleep will help us to rally around you so that we can be of help to you in your newfound faith and in your journey to heaven. Please cancel us. Let's not waste time. Don't leave out anyone. Not only at the Alpha location, in every other location. Please, let's do a very, very thorough job. This is the art of GCK. There is joy in heaven, in the presence of the holy angels and before the heavenly Father. He shall see of the fruit of his travail and shall be satisfied. This is the essence of Calvary. Let's do everything possible to ensure that we don't miss out anyone. If you are all by yourself, listening on the radio or watching on the TV or via any social media and do, if you look at the screen, you will see the link being displayed or the number where you can fill in a form with your details so that we can capture those details and be able to help you please do that without any waste of time for those of us who are already born again we are believers why not bow down your head and begin to pray and answer the great question from the lord jesus christ what will thou that i do for you here and now the stage is set there's no doubt about it the Spirit of the Lord is working mightily in this place and in every other location. What is your desire? What do you want the Lord to do for you tonight? Please pray. Talk to the Lord. Can you imagine the Lord offering you an open check and he says, fill it in. Anything and everything you want. Yours is the privilege to fill in that check. And you'll also be cashing it at the counter of God's visitation. Do what you need to do. He is faithful. He will do what he has promised to do. We have been taught so clearly tonight. Blind Bartimaeus made the promise his premise and he received. The promise is unto you too. So pray unto the Lord. Tell him your desire. You are not a spectator. You are not here to watch as others testify. There is a need or needs in your own life. Please cancel us. We are waiting. If you have not been attended to, you can wave your hand so that the nearest counselor to you can see you 
and come over to where you are. Heaven is rejoicing over you. You are now a citizen of the kingdom. Your name has entered that eternal register, the book of life. Your status has changed. No more will you be called a sinner, but now a saint, indwelt by the Spirit of the Most High God. And you know what? As soon as you give your life to Christ, He assigns to you an invisible bodyguard, the only angel, more powerful than any earthly guard. So many things. You are now have access to the throne of the Father. You can now call God Father. And Jesus lord once you are through you just wave the flag so that we can confirm that you are through at your end please in every location let's accord the importance that this deserves to this session this is very very critical and crucial don't gloss over it As you are praying, believe. Believe. Trust in the Lord. The angels are all around with packages. Packages of blessings and miracles. Just waiting for the pronouncement of God's anointed and chosen servant so that they can start distributing. Your portion is there. Ask the Lord. Be specific. Tell him your heart desire. Counselors, we are waiting for you. We want all our converts to remember converse right from the first night of the crusade the lunch hour with jesus tomorrow at 3 p.m right in this premises over there the choir room please don't miss it it's very very important and in a week's time sunday october 1st will be converse rally globally for all our new converts please take note Remember, tomorrow is minister's conference at six hours GMT. If you have a three-meal course, a three-course meal, I mean, you will not eat the appetizer and run away. You have had the appetizer on Friday. Let's come for the main meal and the dessert. The complete course is for us. We are on a journey. We've just passed the first milestone. Ensure you are there tomorrow. Please cancel us. We are waiting. Once you are through, just wave the flag. Tonight is a special night. You know why? It is your time. It is your turn to testify. The power of the Lord will touch you tonight as never before. You are holding on to the promise. That is your premise as you approach the Lord. It shall be done. We are still waiting to see. Once we are through, in your section, just wave the flag. Thank you very much. At the other side, we are still waiting. Thank you very much. What of the other side?
Okay, let's all rise up now as we welcome our beloved Father in the Lord for this miracle prayer. It is your turn. It is your time. Praise the Lord. It is my time. It is my turn. Your miracle time has come. Remember that man by himself cast away the garment, the badge of blindness, the mark of a problem. You are the one to let go of the wheelchair, let go of the crutches, let go of the braces, let go of whatever it is you are hanging on as the badge as the mark of the pain the problem the sickness now you know that at the final amen the lord is going to heal you my time has come my turn has come raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge what do i say lay the hand on where you have the challenge because jesus said you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and i cannot come to everyone in the multitude crowd stadium one by one and so i said lend me your hand and lay your own hand there where you have the challenge and you believe that the lord himself lays his hand on your hand there you got the miracle now when you hear the final amen don't go back to the wheelchair don't go back to the crutches you will stand you will hear you will see your problem will vanish away father in the mighty name of jesus of the anointing of the holy ghost i bring your healing your deliverance your anointing upon everyone here in the world tonight touch them heal them in jesus name evil spirit tormenting demon i command you come out in jesus name yeah. all those things walking about in the body tormenting the body burning in the body i command come out in jesus name yeah. the swelling for whatever reason the swelling in any part of the body melt off vanish come out in jesus name those blind eyes the lord is touching your blind eyes now open those eyes and see clearly brightly in jesus name deaf and dumb receive your miracle hearing and your tongue loose now by the power of the lord in jesus name i pray lord all internal problems they're taken away right now and i pray that asthma you're healed now in jesus name is your blood dry up in jesus name HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus name tuberculosis you are healed in Jesus name that cancer eating up that part of your body and spreading to different parts of the body I stop those cancer germs right now dry up in Jesus name that pain of ulcer be healed in Jesus name and yeah vanish away in Jesus name 
diabetes, frequent urination, sugar in the blood, be healed in Jesus' name. Hypertension, you are healed in Jesus' name. The pain in any part of your joints, shoulder, elbow, knee, ankle, any part, pain, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That with that hand, stretch it out. Normal, you are healed. And those who have one leg shorter than the other, that short leg, grow out now in Jesus' name. Paralysis, lameness, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, everywhere now, everyone now, right, left, center, needle, back, everywhere, online, everywhere, over the radio, everywhere, over the television, everywhere that you hear the sound of my voice, receive your miracle right now. Lord, we thank you. It is done. In your body, it is done. On your child, on your papa, on your mama, everyone here, everyone, everywhere, it is done in Jesus' name. Performance, confirmation has come for you there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Check up yourself. The miracle is there.